I had accomplished something in my bucket wish list. I mean, I was elated. I was thrilled. And yet I hated this place. I was terrified to come home because the closer I got, the more terrifying this place became. It started out as a need to fill a long time desire and quickly grew into something much greater than that. If you had told me at that point in time, the experiences I was gonna have in this house or in this property and the experiences other people were gonna have, I never would have believed it. It was 5.30 in the morning. I was standing in the corner of the kitchen and I felt a, a pain, a sharp pain, somewhere back here in my neck. And it traveled down my shoulders and spread across my chest and down into my body. I thought, oh my God, I'm having a heart attack. Are you in the house right now? Just heard something say no. I felt terrified, not scared, terrified. And I felt as though I was being dragged to the floor. Did you hear that? Oh, the seven years of living here have changed for me profoundly. It's almost like it's just freaking off right there. I tell you, whatever I just see, it's like it went right through the freaking trailer. You can hear it in the back of the house. It's like a clear message just went right over here. And I don't understand why, and I can't describe it, but I felt very threatened, as though I was in danger. He said, Mama Al has got to get out of that house. He can't stay there. I've had a couple of sort of bucket list wishes in my life, um, two in particular. One was to live in New York City and I was fortunate to have the opportunity to do that for a number of years. And the other was to live on a small farm um, or have my own small farm. And I think the connection there is my dad was a farm boy in Michigan. The family still farms there. Um, 2000, 2001 were difficult years for me. There were a lot of personal tragedies. Uh, friends who were struck with illnesses and uh, even died unexpectedly. Of course, there was 9-11 um, attack so I, I contemplated making a change and uh, thought about uh, just a different environment. Although I don't believe in geographics, it made sense to me to consider moving to the Midwest because that's where my dad's side of the family was from. And we made numerous trips to the farm for summer vacation. What really intrigued us about Willow Creek Farm, aside from all the claims of paranormal activity taking place there, was the story that Al had to share when he bought his dream home and then it turned out to be one of his biggest nightmares. Things evolved, things changed, friends moved away. Um, I became less inclined to participate in these things and so I wasn't really doing a lot. And uh, I just felt that the city had, didn't hold the interest for me that it used to. And, and I felt that it was time for change and although I don't believe in geographics, it made sense for me to move as, a, as I was getting older to be closer to a part of my family and that was my dad's side out in the Midwest. Packed my belongings, sold what I could, um, loaded up a U-Haul and uh, headed west. A friend of mine drove the car, ended up in Rockford, Illinois. And I realized that this was probably the perfect locale for me to fulfill my um, desire, my bucket wish list of having a little farm. At the closing, to lighten the moment, I asked as a joke, oh, is the house haunted? And the seller stopped abruptly in mid-sentence conversation with her broker and said, it's interesting you should ask that. We were talking about it this weekend. In fact, it's very haunted. So I asked, well, what happens? And she told me a few things that happened. Uh, and I thought that was just really fascinating. What a great thing. I mean, I, I've got my little dream farm 
and it's haunted. There's a Casper there. Wow, how cool is that? I actually, even that night when I got home, I wrote an email to friends, mass uh, you know, email mailing to uh, friends and family. And when I closed, I said, and by the way, the house is haunted, woohoo. Uh, I didn't realize it was gonna begin my worst nightmare. If it wasn't for Susan, there's a good possibility I wouldn't have survived my first six months at Willow Creek. My first six months were terrifying. Um, within the first two months, I drove to Rockford, Illinois, late probably on a Friday or Saturday night to visit with friends. Um, and more so, less of a visit, more of an escape from Willow Creek Farm. Uh, I, I was just terrified is an accurate word, it's not um, an over-dramatization, but I was terrified being here alone. I was out in the country, it was dark, and there were all kinds of noises and sensations happening around me on almost a daily basis. We started to investigate and uh, we started upstairs. As we was going up the stairs, we got to the top of turn right, and it sounded like a little girl coming through the headphones. Yeah, you can do that real quick. You hear a little girl right there. Sarah. 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 Was this your bedroom at one point? There is Sarah, um, whose um, approximate age is 32 when she passed, 32 to 34. And the years given are 18 1843 to 1845. And two girls, Mary, who's about 10, um, from the same era, um, who's supposed to be one of Sarah's daughters. And then Lily, who's four, and is also supposed to be one of Sarah's daughters. Lily, are you up here with Sarah? I got a little girl named Lily. Can I play with your ball? Is this your ball? You hear walking? Yeah, I just did that time. Are you coming in here? If there's anybody up here, can you give me a sign and let me know you're here? before Al moved in. If there's anybody in the house right now besides the three of us, could you please knock on something and let us know you're in here with us? Could you do something louder for us? We'd really appreciate it. Do you like having Al here? This bed just moved, I think. 
It felt like the bed just moved. What'd you get? This freaking bed just moved on mm -hmm. my back. It felt like it pressed up against me. Let's see if it moves any. Now you gotta press it pretty damn hard. Yeah, I was sitting here like this, leaned over, and it touched my back. Well, maybe it wasn't the bed. Maybe somebody else touched it. I don't know. Sarah, do you like having Sean here? I felt as though I was cons I was never alone. I was always in a singular or multiple presence. Um, I was being stared at constantly. There were knockings, bangs, voices. I was touched. And uh, this is a lot more than I bargained for. It's ironic that I never came into the house. The first time I stepped into the house was the day of the closing. And uh, from the minute we got here until the minute everybody left, um, there were only three people and the two young children who did not have some type of unexplainable experience, if not multiple experiences. And some of them were pretty dramatic and pretty drastic. Is there somebody under the bed? Do you hear a scooting sound? I heard that and it felt like somebody just tugged the back of my shirt. I guess I did say I like to play games. If you're under the bed, can you come out here, please? Would you like me to put your ball back? What was that? Would you like me to put your ball back? Would you like me to put your ball back? What was that? Can you knock on something if you want me to put your ball back? Michelle came up to me and she asked me, have you talked to Elizabeth? I said, no, I haven't. You need to talk with her. Okay, why? You just need to talk with her. So eventually I cornered Elizabeth and was actually in the living room here. And uh, she was pretty upset. And I tried to get information from her, but she really didn't want to talk about it. And she finally did say to me, you need to leave here. You have got to come home with us come back to Rockford. You can't stay here by yourself. What she saw, but more than anything, what she felt here really disturbed her. She said, I've never felt the intensity um, of energy that I feel here. And she said, there's a lot of it that's not good. Even during the day when we were walking around shooting all the B-roll and stuff around the farm, I remember I walked upstairs and I was off into one of the side bedrooms and you know, just shooting some shots and different angles and things like that. And you constantly had this weird feeling like something was staring at you. You try really hard to communicate. Are the little girls in the house right now? She was actually near tears and begging me, you've got, you cannot stay here. And I thought, well, what am I going to do? This is, I explained, this is my home now. This is my house and I'm going to make it into a home. At one point, Elizabeth got up and she walked over to the kitchen area and she said, come here quickly. So we walked over to the kitchen. Myself and Shay got up from the couch. Elizabeth was in the kitchen and she said, put your hand out. And I did. I put my hand straight out and it was cold. It was bitter cold um, surrounding my hand. And then it dissipated. After that, we went back and sat in, uh, in the family room. And I was in a mild state of shock um, at that point. And it was 
really unnerving to hear someone who claimed to be a skeptic talking about things they had observed and experienced um, from the moment we set foot in, in the house. Did you just move something in here? Two knocks. Can you knock again for me, please? Michael, is Al your friend? That was good. Can you do that again? We appreciate it. You're doing a great job. People say they hear you scream. Can you scream for us? People say they hear you scream. Can you scream for us? People say they hear you scream. Can you scream for us? Was this once your farm? I think uh, a lot of what's going on on the property and, and the house and, and the barns got to do with, you know, the past history of the place. Do you want us to go outside? You want to walk outside for a little bit, see if we get any of that Indian chanting and those drums and stuff? Yeah. We'll keep this on. Something that happened to me personally, or I observed was interesting, is uh, I have a friend who's a very gifted psychic medium. Um, she knows someone who is uh, Native American and said that he would be glad to come and do a prayer ceremony. So he did. And uh, my friend, uh, the medium, had sage. It was a, a big bunch. It was a long bunch. It was probably a foot like that, six inches in diameter, bunch of sage. As we were, were close to the end of the ceremony, and he prayed to the north, and the south, the east, and the west, um, and as I said, he is full-blooded Native American, um, the sage was smoldering, which sage does when you light it, but it shot out flames like a flamethrower. Sage doesn't do that. And my friend the medium said, I'm getting a sense now that they're speaking to us. They're drawing me towards the barn. Follow me. So we did. The prayer ceremony was, con was concluded and we followed um, my friend. We got halfway to the barn and the sage again shot out flames close to two feet like a flamethrower. And then my friend, the medium, said, I need to continue towards the field. And she did, and got to the back of the barn, about 100 feet from the back of the barn. And again, and this was the last time, flames shot out. 24 inches, 20 inches. At that point, my friend said, they're buried here. That's what they're telling me. Um, this is one of those experiences that um, is personal. It's an observation. We all saw the sage shoot flames as far as a determination that natives are buried behind the barn. Unless I excavated back there, there's no way of proving it. Are you in the house right now? Just heard something say no. That was loud. Yeah. Tell us where you're at. Don't turn it down. It wasn't over this. Yeah, it was. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I like it. Michael, are you out here? Yes. Did you hear it? 
Do something really loud and significant so we know that that's you, Michael. Is there something behind me? Wait. Please walk up to us, Michael. You're doing a good job. Regularly for the first six months, uh, when I go to sleep, I was touched. Um, I'd hear footsteps. There would be bangs, very loud bangs out of nowhere with no explanation. Josh, that way. What? What? Which way? Just forward. There you go. Stop, stop. Hold on, the noise is coming from back here. What's <clears throat> here? I know, I just want to build a film that way. Michael, too. we appreciate you trying to communicate with us. We're going to try to find our way back there. Did you see anything? Mm -hmm. Something just touched my arm. I swear to God, right here. Did you just touch me? Oh, that was hard. Michael, you touch Rocky the same way you just touched me. There's some kind of voice coming through. Did you hear the footsteps and everything again? Yeah, back here. Okay, Josh, be careful walking around here. Michael, stop moving away from us. Do something loud right now. What is it about this barn that keeps you out here? Are you still in here with us? Give us a sign. You guys have headphones on, let me know if you hear anything. Are you walking? Shadow. 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 Both you guys stand still right now. Josh, stay right here. I'm going to go over this way, okay? Okay. <clears throat> Whoa, shit. What the? What is it? Fucking sound was freaking, just freaking took off right there. Just came right up in my face. Who's in here? Watch closely as this ball of energy quickly turns into a full-blown apparition, blurring out the camera as it moves into frame. What validated this piece of evidence for us was one, Sean was able to see with his own eyes, and two, as this apparition forms, it blurs out the camera as it tries to focus on the image. This piece of footage is one of the most dramatic and compelling pieces of evidence we've captured in over 10 years of investigating the paranormal. Who's in here? Holy sh Josh, just give me a sec, hold on, hold on. Who's in here? Tell us right now. I don't think that's you, Michael. It wants us to torture you. I'm telling you, whatever I just seen, it was like it went right through the freaking trailer. Come up and touch me again. Because I like walked around, I was looking over the camera to make sure I didn't hit anything and it was just like we're standing right freaking there and just video. huh I, I was facing it I think so I had a box bringing a mattress uh, stacked in what's now the dining room on the first floor I had boxes in front of the um, door leading to the stair that goes upstairs as though that was going to stop something but I had to make some kind of attempt as feeble as it was to 
create some sense of security. Hey, Michael, if that is you out here, thank you for showing yourself to us. We're not here to hurt you, so we don't want you hurting us. Al gave us permission to come here, okay? Al gave us permission to come here, okay? Al gave us permission to come here, okay? Josh was saying right here and you touched him. Can you touch me please? If you're not Michael, can you please tell me your name? Who was that? Are you here to protect Al? Did you hear that? Hey, yeah. What did it say? I don't know. Or is Al here to protect you? Let them get used to us and then... It's right back there. I know, but just let them get this used is, to us. This could be the best stuff the whole night. Hey, <laughs> you want to run? Stay run in to there and me and Josh will walk over here Farm? to the Indian burial ground. Well, Where's the Indian burial ground? They said with the Native Americans, just ask for permission to speak with them. What was it? Just throw something over there. I didn't hear it. It's freaking throwing shit over here, aren't they? Are you throwing stuff? You not want us to be in here? Come on, do something for me, please. Who's in here with us? Did you hear that? Hey, so, what'd you say, buddy? Who's in here with us? Can you tell me your name? Michael, are you in here? Uh, there was a miss I just went over to you, Josh. Can you touch Josh? It's kind of weird that he's just getting stuff, and then Al pulls in the driveway and nothing. All stops. And I think the turning point for me, I was on the phone one night with Susan, my friend from Atlanta, who is a very gifted medium. This is the woman who contacted me through MySpace. Um, and, and later I was to learn she's a very gifted medium. And as I mentioned, that I think she's the reason. She was my lifeline. The person I could reach out to and say, you're not crazy, it's okay, you're going to be okay. Um, but I was sitting in, I call it my Archie Bunker, my big stuffed chair, in the family room one night, talking on the phone with her, and all of a sudden there was loud, it wasn't banging, it was knocking, coming from the front door in the living room. And then it moved into the parlor, and then it moved above my head, upstairs somewhere. And Susan said, well, get up and find out what it is. And I said, hell no, I'm not going to get up and find out what it is. It was terrifying. I'm here all alone. There's nobody around. It's pitch black, and there's loud, loud knocking going on in the house. And it's not pipes, and it's not a branch banging against the side of the house. It's something I can't explain. It's something I can't see, 
but it's something that I can clearly hear and I have no explanation for it. When I got within a few miles of this place, I, I could just, I could feel the energy. I, I can't explain that, but I could feel it. And by the time I pulled in the garage and turned the handle on the back door and walked in, um, I was about ready to have a meltdown. Probably the majority of encounters people have with the supernatural are positive encounters. There's no doubt there's negative energy. Negative energy is all around us. Negative people are all around us. There's no doubt that exists. Um, as far as demons, for me, the jury's partially out. I may have had an experience that was within or paralleled that realm very early on here. Um, but I'm not certain. Um, I just know that it felt very different and it was really the most frightening period that I've had here. So me and Al were pretty close to wrapping up the interview when all of a sudden on the second floor you heard footsteps just shoot across the floor. And then a few seconds later, one of our bags on the wooden floor sounded like it was drug across the floor. To me, that really validated a lot of the activity that Al was talking about that was taking place at the farm. Uh, there's an interesting group, a group from um, the Twin Cities, Minnesota. We're down here. Yeah, I heard that. Did you? What was it? It was paranormal. Rocky. Sounded like somebody sliding something across the floor, like a bag. So I turned around and yelled out for Rocky, and of course, Rocky and Sean were still in the car sleeping, so me and Al were the only two in the house. Hello? It's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's what I said to you guys, too. It's all very subtle here. I, not that there aren't really... Are you in this room? I got a device right here. It's pumping out some energy. So you can communicate with me. Sarah, are you up here? What the hell was that? Are you up here? What the hell was that? Are you walking up here?